everyone. Welcome to my channel. My name is Kathy. If you are new here, thanks so much for stopping by. If we have painted together before, welcome back. I'm glad you're here. Today's technique video is how to paint a cone flower. So let's take a look at the supplies that we will use today and then we will get started. So we have three colors of paint that we are using today. We are using Folk Art Multi-Surface brand and we have Thicket, which is the green, Apple Red, and Daffodil Yellow. Now we are using multi-surface paint. This is my favorite thing to paint with. Um, full disclaimer, this is not a sponsored video. I just believe in sharing with you guys the paints that I use, that I've used for years, so I know how they're gonna work and that they really work well with this technique that we're gonna do today. Uh, multi-surface is great because you can paint on glass or wood or a canvas or tin any of those surfaces using this multi-surface and it works great. This brand is a little bit thicker also than a lot of the craft paint that is out there. So I really appreciate that about it as well. Okay, so we have our three colors. We have two brushes we're gonna use today. This is a number 12 flat brush and this is a quarter inch scruffy brush. And we will talk about each of those brushes and what they do as we go along. Truly you guys, whatever brushes you have at home, will be fine, just a flat brush. And even if you don't have a scruffy brush, I will show you a workaround um, to how to do the same stroke without having that specific brush. I will link all of our supplies in the description below. So you will have the colors and the brushes that we use and the other supplies, which I'll show you here in a second. I want you guys to be able to go back to this video and rewind and see all the things we use. So it'll all be there in the description below. The brushes are actually folk art one stroke paint brushes made by Plaid. The the only place that I know of right now that you can get those brushes is at onestroke.com and I will link that address in the description as well. Okay, let me scooch these out of the way and we'll talk about the other supplies that we have going on here. We have our styrofoam plate. This is our very fancy paint palette. I already have a couple of the blobs of paint on here and we'll talk about that here in just a sec as far as the placement and how you wanna get your paint on the brush. But just styrofoam plate, nothing fancy. Um, off to the side here, you can kind of see in the background, is a brush basin that just has water in it to rinse my brushes. So nothing fancy there. Whatever you have at home, a cup works just fine. Uh, let's see, I have a paper towel that's off here to the side because I am messy and I will use that. And then my favorite part of what we're doing is this wax paper. Hopefully you can see it on the video. But whether you paint with me in person or if we're painted together on this video, we always use wax paper. This is the surface we practice on. So if we were in a live paint class, we would practice on the wax paper first before going to our good surface. Okay, so that's just a great inexpensive thing you can have at home to practice on. It's a nice smooth surface, so it really, you know, lets you just kind of practice everything before committing to the good, <laughs> the good surface that you're going to. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to grab our flat brush first. This is what we're going to use the petals. Um, used to make the petals on our cone flower. And we're gonna do something called double loading. So we're going to, all double loading is, is putting two colors of paint on one paintbrush. So let's take a look at how to do that. If you wanna go ahead and get your blobs of paint, so I have my red and yellow and then a little bit of space in between. Okay, we have the green up here, but we'll get to that later. Right now we're gonna focus on these two colors here. Leave this space in here because this is what we call a blending spot. And I'm gonna show you what we mean. So you are gonna take your flat brush and we are gonna be straight up and down. And I am gonna dip one corner in the red and one corner in the yellow. So you guys can kind of see that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back to our plate and we're gonna push that brush down and we're gonna swish it back and forth. So you're gonna pull it towards you and push away and towards you and push away. And what we're doing is creating a blending spot. The purpose of this spot is to get this paint load it up into the paintbrush, okay? So we're gonna do this, gosh, probably three or four times. You're gonna dip in each corner, swoosh it back and forth, dip each corner, blend, 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 and just keep swishing, keep working that paint up into the brush. Now, one thing I've noticed when people start this method of painting is sometimes they move this blending spot all over the plate. We don't wanna do that every time you wanna come back just to this same spot, okay? So we're gonna keep dipping each corner, and blend. And you can see, I wanna keep the red by the red and the yellow by the yellow, okay? And we're gonna do this, like I said, probably three or four times. You want a lot of paint worked up to this brush and you'll see why, especially for this um, petal stroke that we're gonna do to build this cone flower, you want this brush to be super goopy, 
Okay, so this is the initial getting the paint on the brush, and that's what we're doing here with our blending spot. You guys will see as we go through that every time you need to pick up paint, you will do the same thing. You will come back, dip each corner, swoosh it a couple times, and then keep painting. Okay, that's very important because the beauty of doing double loading is that you get color highlight shading all in one stroke, all in one brush. And that's the beauty of putting these two colors, which you'll see when we do these petals, because it's pretty cool, okay? So, double loading, swish back and forth, keep picking up paint. You guys will feel as we're practicing when your brush needs some more paint. So when it does, you just come back, swoosh, and grab some more. All right, I'm gonna do just a couple dips. It'll just be off here to the side, and you'll see me come back to it from time to time. Okay, now I want you to take a look at this brush and see, do you see how much paint is on there? That's what we call a goopy paintbrush. The reason that we want so much on is because you're gonna see when we do the stroke, we really squish this brush down to get this petal shape that we want. And that's why having a lot of paint is super important. Okay, so let's practice the petal first and then we're gonna kind of come along this part of the wax paper so you can see the petal. And then we'll scooch over here and actually build the flower, okay? All right, so we are gonna start with our brush straight up and down. Okay, the yellow is on top and the red is closest to my body. Okay, it actually doesn't matter as much in this case, but that's just kind of how we're going to start out today. And we are going to, we are going to first make a little dot just with the edge of the brush. Can you see that little yellow dot? This is going to be our guiding point. Okay, and I'll show you what I mean. So we are going to start here, straight up and down. Yellow's on top, red is closest to me. I am gonna start on the edge of this brush. I'm going to lean it forward and I'm gonna squish, really push that brush down. And I'm gonna slide up just a little bit, lifting up and I'm coming up to where that dot is. This is kind of our centering point. This is, this is where our, our petals will head and this will make sense here as we, as we go along. Okay, let's do another one here. I'm gonna do a little dot, okay? Straight up and down, we are on the edge of that brush. You're gonna to touch to the surface, push it forward and down. Now I haven't slid, I haven't moved at all, but do you see how my bristles are really squished down? You're gonna squish it down, slide up towards that polka dot and lift up, okay? And just from these couple petals that we see, you should be able to see the beauty of double loading. So we've got red, we've got yellow, kind of a combination of the two. It's pretty cool. Okay, let's do another one. So there's my little dot. I'm going to start straight up and down on the edge, pushing away. I'm leaning forward, really squishing those bristles down. Slide just a little bit as you're lifting up and come to that dot. Okay, let's do one more up here and then we will talk about putting these together. Now you guys saw, actually after each one of these strokes, I went back over to my plate to reload because I wanna keep a lot of paint on this brush. Okay, there's my dot. Starting straight up on the edge, lean it forward, really squish down. Now, if you didn't have enough paint on your brush, you are not gonna get this squishing. That's why it's super important, you're gonna lift up right to that dot, to have a lot of paint. If you did not have a lot of paint, here's what would happen. You'd be right on the edge, let me just make sure you guys can see this, and you'd kind of get little petals that look like that, which are okay, but for this cone flower, we want big, big poofy petals, okay? Now, the reason we started with that dot, let me show you. So this on our cone flower is the center petal, okay? That dot is still at the top. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come and add a petal on each side of this. So I am gonna start just at an angle off to the right. The yellow is still on top. I am going to lean it forward squish down and I'm gonna slide up to where that original dot was. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm angled in towards that polka dot. I'm squishing down, sliding up to where that dot is. So you have three different petals and they are all coming up to where we put that polka dot before. Let me show you this again, okay? I'm grabbing some more paint. So here's our settle, our center, <laughs> our center petal. I think I'm orange two words there, center petal. Okay, so I'm gonna start again. My brush is straight up and down. Yellow is on top, red is closest. I'm angling in, I am angling so that yellow is pointing towards where we had that polka dot. I'm going to squish that brush, slide and lift up. So it's heading right to that same polka dot. 
Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Starting up in the edge, lean forward towards that polka dot, slide and lift up. Okay, let's do another one up here. And you guys, I'm just, all I'm doing, coming back to my plate, dipping each corner, swooshing back and forth. Remember, lots of paint for this technique. Okay, we are going to be straight up and down. Again, I'm angled in. That yellow is angled towards that polka dot that we started with. Okay, starting up on the brush, leaning forward, squeeze it down, slide and lift up. And same thing. Now this one is angled coming from the left. So I'm going to start up on the edge of the brush, squish down, slide and lift up. So you can see on each of these flowers, we have three petals. Now you could, you could do four probably, but I think when you're first starting out, three is easiest because it gives you that goal of doing a center and then one on each side. So remember each time we started, we had a polka dot there and we went, we put our petals going towards that polka dot. Okay. That kind of gives you a focal point on where to end your petals, if that makes sense. Okay, I'm going to do a couple more over here, coming back and picking up some more paint. And let's do it from the beginning. And it's funny because, honestly, you guys, when you start painting these, the faster you go, the easier it is. Just when I'm trying to show you and kind of get the, the, the strokes in place, it's a little easier to go slow. But you guys will find once you're actually painting, it goes so much better if you go fast. <laughs> the petals just kind of just seem to, to flow. Okay, so let's start a couple other here. Remember, I am straight up and down. In this case, my yellow is on top. The red is closest to me. I'm starting right up on that edge of that brush. And you guys can see, goopy, lots of, lots of paint. We are going to start up on that edge. I'm going to push forward and squish down. If you're not getting a big squish, a big squish, there's nothing wrong with giving your brush a little wiggle. And slide and lift up. I'm going to come on this side, squish down, slide and lift up. And then come on the left side, squish down, slide, and lift up. Okay. So again, if you're not getting that wide of a petal, you need to A, check, make sure you have enough paint on your brush. And then B, make sure you're really, really pushing down hard. Okay. I'm going to start here again. We'll start a new one. I'm straight up and down on my brush. I'm going to lean it forward, squish, slide, lift up. Coming from the right Lean down, squish, slide up. And coming from the left, lay it down, squish, slide up. And each time they all come back to that point. Okay. Now, the reason we have that point is because we have to know where to put the fuzzy top part of the cone flower. So you get your petals in place. And then we are going to grab our little scruffy brush. Now this brush is a little different. Let's see if I can get on here. This is actually a natural hair brush versus the, the, the man made the synthetic brushes that we use for everything else. But these little scruffy brushes are kind of a natural hair. They sort of look like um, an old beat up brush that you had, just kind of really fuzzy looking. All right, so we are going to come back over to our plate. And this time we are going to dip in the green. We have just a little bit of that thicket, which is one of my favorite greens. It's a real woodsy looking green. I just really like it. So we are going to take our brush and just sort of dip that in there and then come off to the side. And we are just going to pounce up and down. So we're going to make our separate blending spot just for this. I think I'm shaking the camera with my bouncing. Just this. And what that is doing by pouncing is we're working that paint up into the brush. I'm gonna move it over here a little bit so I don't shake the camera as much, but you're just gonna dip in the green and then just give it a tap, 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 tap. And you'll see now we have a lot of paint on that brush. Okay, we're going to now come back to our little petals here. And all we're gonna do is just pounce straight up and down just a little circle. And that'll be the top part of the cone flower, which I'll show you a couple examples here in just a second. All right, so you want to line this brush just right up where those three, remember how we started with that polka dot? We're going to basically cover that up, and we are just going to pounce just a little circle, okay? And that makes the top of our cone flower. All right, just lightly touching, and you just kind of pounce around in a little circle, okay? And I'm going to come up here and just kind of pounce around. Now, the cool thing here, and I'll show this when I lift this wax paper up, you'll be able to see it. 
our paint's really goopy because remember how thick it was when we loaded up this paint. The cool thing is now, and you'll see when I lift, you've got ridges and you get highlight and color and shading and it's all just goopy and cool. When I pounced, it picked up a little bit of that yellow and that red color and it looked really cool. So don't ever worry about if you're worried things are too wet and you're going to smear something. Don't do it. Just pounce. It'll pick up whatever color's on there and it just kind of adds some highlight into it. It's very cool. Um, with the one stroke method that we do, it's actually called wet on wet. So a lot of times we just full steam ahead and don't even let things dry. <laughs> All right. I pounced a few of those centers. So I need to come back here, dip in my green and just kind of pick up a little bit more there. So remember each time you dip in the paint, go over your blending spot. All right. Let's add one more dot here. And we're just kind of tapping just real lightly, get that little fuzzy shape. And you'll see the cool thing about this scruffy brush is that it does give it sort of a, a textured, like a fuzzy look to it. Okay, I'm going to come here and just pounce that cone flower there. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have. Let me put that in the water. Okay, let me lift these up so you can see. Now, it's up to you. You Oops, we tore that wax paper. Um, you can add stems and leaves. I do have another video out there that covers um, doing leaves. So if you want to take a peek at that, you could add some leaves and some stems this way. But today we're just kind of focused just on the shape of the flower. So you guys can see, look at that highlight and shading. Can you see like where the yellow and the red... That is just so cool. And that's simply by double loading, just by getting that paint on the brush. But this should give you a real good feel about how poofy we want those those stems to, or those petals, leaves <laughs> to be. Okay, let me show you a couple examples. This is one that's real similar in, in the color that we did. This is just on a little um, piece of cardstock. Okay, so there's our flowers that we did today with our little pound centers and then these leaves. I did a leaf video so you'll be able to check my YouTube channel and go back and see how to do the leaves. I have another one over here. Just a little different color scheme. Okay, so here's pink and white. And then we did like a little bit of yellow and green there. Um, there'll be some other videos coming on how to do your grasses and all that. Um, but this again, this is just a piece of cardstock. So you could make a greeting card. You could fold this in half and make it a card for somebody. Super sweet. I have this one also, just I'll show you. It's just on a little glass jar. And these are some wildflowers, which we'll have a video coming soon on that. But there's just a couple cone flowers that you can kind of see on there in purple. Okay, I did want to tell you one little trick that we talked about. If you do not have that little scruffy brush, okay? If you do not have that, what you can do instead of this is do a polka dot where we use the scruffy brush. So let me show you, let me wipe this guy off here. Okay, so if you do not have this fluffy brush, what you can do is come back and instead of the top of a brush, you turn it over and we dip the handle in the green paint and then you just come over and you can swirl a little polka dot. Okay, so just on the edge of that and you can swirl. So if you're not able to pounce the center okay you would just come with the handle of your brush and you could just swirl a little bit of a dot there instead of pouncing like we did here okay so again you would just dip in the paint give it a little it's just like a big polka dot okay so that is an option if you don't have the scruffy brush at home not a problem you can still make these beautiful flowers and give it a very fun center all right, you guys, thank you so much for joining me. I hope it was fun. Just a little bit of fun springy flowers there for you with the cone flowers. And if you did like this video, if you would hit the like button, I would greatly appreciate it. It lets me know you're watching and that you liked it. Um, there is also a subscribe button. If you would consider hitting that, that just lets you know um, when new videos are uploaded that I do and keeps you in touch with all the fun things we're doing on this channel. So in the comments below, if you guys have any questions or comments or information you'd like to share, or if you're practicing these at home, take a picture and upload it um, into those comments so I can see how you're doing. That would be so fun. I would greatly appreciate that. But thanks you guys so much for joining me. I hope it was fun painting along and I hope to see you for the next video. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.